Hey everybody, I'm Kier Spates, and welcome to another episode of Living Your Life. You may know me from the Every Morning Show. I am joined today, though, by my good friend, uh, Dr. Corey Abear, world-renowned author, medical doctor, and sickle cell expert. Uh, man, he's on every show with me. So, uh, Dr. Abear, man, what's happening, man? Come on, man. Man, just, 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 just fighting the fight out here, brother. Warriors, I feel the warriors, the, the, the strength of the universe is coming together for the warriors so we can fight this fight, man. Yeah, man. You know, today, man, it's going to be a... Uh... It's going to be an interesting day today. We have a really, really special guest today, man, because, you know, today uh, we're, 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 we're over on the other side of the world talking about sickle cell today, man. Uh, you know, I, I think this is going to be something that's really needed. Uh, you know, let's just see what sickle cell is like over for, in other countries, not just here in America, just what's like over there. And who are the people, who are the, who are the juniors of the world over there, the cures of the world, over there, Dr. A. Bears of the world over there? Who are the people who are fighting the cause, the good fight over there on that side of the world while we're doing it here? What, what do you think about that, Dr. A. Bear? I, I think it's interesting because, you know, when you look at a place like Africa where, you know, sickle cell, the origins of it, I'm interested to know how this is treated and how it's looked upon in the motherland. Cause I think it's important that we, if, if it's done right, we need to leave it alone. If it ain't, we coming over there too. Because we, we gonna, we gonna get it. We gonna get it right. We gonna get it right. Well, we have somebody today, Dr. A. Bear, who champions for one thing and that's access to care and quality health care for sickle cell, uh, known as the sickle motivator. Uh, she founded, uh, Joseph, in August of 2019, to provide access to quality health care for warriors, create awareness, and reach out to warriors in rural communities. Living your life, please welcome Judith Matthew. How you doing, Judith? How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> yes, blessings. Welcome, welcome. How thank are you doing? Thank you, all the way from Nigeria. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Tell us, what, right. Part, what part of Africa are you in right now? Is it Nigeria? I'm in Nigeria, Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. And um, <laughs> you know, you you have a foundation called Joseph. What does that stand for, Judith? Okay, it stands for Judith Ojonugwa Sickle Cell Foundation. That's Joseph. Yes. Okay, Joseph. That yes. got it. Acronym, Dr. A. Bear. See how smart she is. She put an acronym to it. Now, now, just just for the record, my middle name is Joseph, and and but not with the F, with a PH. And also, you know, I've done I've done a little I've done a little time in Nigeria, not jail time, but I have done some time. I had to clear that up at uh at, in Lagos. And when I tell you, you could boy, you there's a lot of stuff going on in Nigeria. In Nigeria, I mean, there's a lot of research. There's a lot of stuff uh, as far as sickle cell. Uh, in the community. But what I didn't see when I was there, which I hope you can enlighten us on, I never was with a patient that was sick. And I never actually saw the 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 way that they were cared for in the hospitals. H how is it there? Tell us about that. Okay. Um, to be honest, the, the, the way we get our treatment over here is, is quite pathetic. Because some of these doctors and nurses, they don't have empathy. Wow. Really? Well, that's, that's like a, kind of like that in the United States. But we would think that in the motherland that it would be better. Yeah. I, you know, I, I thought it would be too. You know, that's, that's, that's really hard to... to uh... She said pathetic. Yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 I saw the choice of word. It was... I mean, <laughs> there was no other word she chose, but but pathetic. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Julie, we just—I've never heard nobody call the care pathetic in sickle cell. Pathetic is the choice of word. So, what are some of the face uh, challenges you face in Nigeria with sickle cell? Okay, um, I, I like I said earlier, the way we are being treated as as warriors over here it's quite pathetic because um, some of these nurses and doctors don't have empathy. There was one time I had a crisis and I went to the hospital. I met the nurse. I told her that I'm, I'm, I'm having a crisis, but she didn't even look at me. She just said, go sit over there. And I, I sat there, I, I sat there for like three hours 
um, no one attended to me. It was uh, one when my friend came. My friend is um, also a doctor, so she came because I I told her that I'm not. They are not giving me treatment yet, so she had to leave her own um, um, station, and then she came to to the hospital where I was, and then she was raising an, an alarm that this lady is in excruciating pain, and you're not even giving her um, pain relief or something. And then the nurse was like, "Because I am not crying, that's why she didn't she didn't deem it. Um, she didn't think it was that serious. So I am supposed to come to the hospital." wailing crying and then she knows that i am in pain which is not supposed to be and one other thing we face over here is um they don't want to give us our um, pain meds they think or, or they will tell us that uh, we're getting addicted so they won't place us on a higher pain medication they will just give us like mild um, pain relief and they are supposed to like alternate or something so it's just as if we're all going backwards so that's what we face over here so do you find that that it has gotten it stayed the same it's gotten worse or or, or what because I, when i was over there i i saw the hospitals but i never was allowed to actually go into a room or saw the actual care i saw the treatment protocols and stuff, but I never saw it. So I was really interested. So you think it's gotten worse than when you were a kid? Um, It keeps getting better. It keeps getting better. It does keep getting better. Yeah, it does keep better. But but, but it, it, I, it's so funny, Dr. Abraham. It sounds like even Nigeria, they treat them the same way they treat me in America. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't come in there crying or, or, or wailing, and I'm in a crisis, and they tell me, oh, well, y you know, I sit there for three hours. Well, we don't think you're in a six cell crisis because you're not making any noise. So is this, it is, is this something that we're going to find out that this is universal around the world? This is just, now it's starting to look like this is just tied just to sickle cell. Well, the thing, yeah, it seems like that, but, you know, like we, we did speak to that lady in Turkey. Yes. Oh, that's where you need to go. See, Judy, we found a lady in Turkey with sickle cell, and they have the best care in the world in Turkey. We have to just go to Turkey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. So, 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 but, but, but there is there was something very unique about her. Yes, she did not look like a black person. She was. Yeah, she was white. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so I. So we gotta wonder: was it that the care was better in Turkey? Or that the care she got was better in Turkey, and that see that's where the rubber hits the road for me. Because remember we had the the professional basketball player; he was abroad, but he and he looked like a regular black dude, and he said that his care was a little better in one of those European countries too. So I, it, it, it's really hard to say, but I, it, it hurts my heart to hear you say that. That in the motherland is not it's not you're not getting that care because if you can't get good care there, where can you get it? Yeah, you know, and Judith, you know, so you know, like, you like if you if you're a child in, in, in with sickle cell in Nigeria today, is the care better for them at least? Um, I would say it's it's even better for um an adult than a child because imagine if that happened to a child and you just leave him or her unattended to it would it, it, it might just get worse so yes uh. so i think it's better as an adult yes then, uh. then it is as a child well it, it do the, yes. do do they have universal screening? Do you have like everybody that gets that's born? Do y'all have to? Is there a test done so everybody knows if they have sickle cell trait or not? No, no, no. Yeah. You just need to go to the hospital and maybe get your genotype test yeah. done or something. But only, but only or maybe from. But on, but only after mm -hmm. you have had symptoms. Which is what, which is, and see, when I was there, I was concerned that they said that they were going to be starting that, but that was, oh, that was probably like 10 years ago. So I was hoping that it had started because there, if you have sickle cell trait and somebody else has sickle cell trait, if you don't 
go try to pay and get your own test done, then you have no idea if you could have a child that has sickle cell disease. Is that still the case? Um, in my own case, I was in my own case, I was diagnosed um of sickle cell when I was a child. So I think it just varies from hospital to hospital. So yes. Yes. Okay. Well then let's talk about this. Tell me about the surge you had in twenty nineteen and uh why you think that it had to be uh some sickle cell disease awareness after your surgery. What what surgery did you have, Miss Matthew? I had I had a total hip replacement surgery called them um, um, um AVN, a vascular necrosis. I had I had the pain on my left hip and so they had to um take um take the dead bone out and they um implanted an iron prosthesis on my left hip and I was able to walk perfectly because I was bedridden at some point. I couldn't do anything. It was my family that um, were like carrying me, taking me everywhere to go to the toilet, to do anything I wanted to do, have my bath. So it was just family. So when I had the surgery um, done, I was able to walk um, perfectly. And then I went back to school for my final exams. Wow. So, yes. That's oh, good. Wow. I mean, a vascular oh, necrosis is a very common thing. And I, I will send this out to all the sickle cell warriors that are listening. If you are having hip pain, and see, the reason why I, I have, we have to say these things on here is because I feel like people around the world are not getting the appropriate care. They're not getting the appropriate education. They're not. So these are the type of things that now I'm going to start saying because you would think that if you go to the doctor for sickle cell, you would just know these things, but it seems like it's not the case. Avascular necrosis is when you, because your cells start to sickle, you don't get a lot of blood flow through the, the top of your femur bone, the longest bone in your body. That's the bone from the, basically to, from the knee to the hip. And if you don't get enough blood flow, then the top of that gets rotten and it'll break off and it'll just, it, they got to replace it. But, the problem is, if you start having hip pain, you need to tell people immediately and people need to listen to you. See, that's probably what was happening. You probably told them, I'm having hip pain. And they were like, yeah, that's just this. Yeah, that's just, you know, your regular yes. cell pain. Yes. They didn't pay attention. Yes. Right. You know, yes. and so, you know, Ms. Matthews, like, so what? what, what, what is a... What is like if you have a sickle cell crisis? What's the procedures that you have to go to having a sickle cell crisis over in Nigeria? You know how how does that work for you? Okay, um, um, my friend, my friend uh, in the UK told me um, that when she's having her um, crisis, she just have to like call an ambulance and an ambulance comes to the house to take her. But over here, it is not like that. So when you're having your um, crisis, you just have to alert your um, friends or your family members around and they will be the one to like take you. But in my own case, I have learned to um, um, do like a first aid for myself before I go to the hospital. And when I say first aid is I learned how to inject myself. So I give myself... Um, injections before going to the hospital. What kind of injections? Um, pentaz pentazosin. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. yes. what, what is that, Dr. Bear? Uh, it's a medicine like a, a anti-inflammatory and a kind of muscle relaxers to try to decrease the pain. But let me, okay. ask, let me ask a question now. What part of Nigeria are you in? Are you in Lagos? What part of what? Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. No, I mean Abuja. 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 Okay, so that's Abuja. still a very, Abuja. that that Abuja is still a very, you know, uh, cosmopolitan place. It's not like it's rural. Right, right. So, it's so, so the hospitals are not providing the appropriate care in a in a city. Um, they. They are, but but my house is far from. The oh, your house. Okay, so okay, I get it. Okay. Before. Okay, okay. I, okay. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So because, that's like the first aid. Got it. Yeah, Miss Matthew. You know, I found out this too. You know, 
Talk to us about losing your sister to sickle cell disease. So y'all both had sickle cell. And when did you, when, when, talk, to, talk to me about that situation. What happened between your sister? What, what happened to her? Why, why did she have to lose her life and lose her fight with sickle cell? Okay. Um, I, I was five years old when she passed. She had um, a vaso-occlusive crisis. It's one of the um, complications for sickle cell. One of the crises, yes. So she had vaso-occlusive and she was out of um, blood, they said she she um, she needs blood transfusion because her PCV um, level was low, and they needed to transfuse her five uh, pints of blood, and um, it was just a lot. She was losing um, air, so they had to like put oxygen, transfuse blood, de drip, and everything, but she couldn't make it. Yes. So she, she passed. And how old was your sister? She really fought. She fought. Yes. How old was she when she passed? Um, she was thirteen. Thirteen years old. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. And, and yes. Doctor Abraham, for the rest of us that's just watching and stuff, what type of what type of crisis was that? She called it vaso occlusive. So basically, vaso occlusive yes. means that you've occluded a vein or occluded an artery, right? So and so, uh, most of the crises tend to be vaso occlusive because a pain crisis is still caused by lack of perfusion right but sometimes you can have a vaso occlusive crisis and there is no pain so basically you can have a vaso occlusive crisis and your heart gets your heart blood blood vessels of your heart get clogged or your blood vessels of your kidneys get clogged or, or some type of circulatory issue and so that's and so it's not necessarily a pain that you don't have like you I mean you may have pain, but it's not bone pain. It's more uh, uh, pain of your tissues. You know what I mean. And so, but but what happens is you can infarct something. So what does that mean? That means that you've heard of a myocardial infarction. That's a heart attack because you have a blocked blood vessel in your heart. So if you can have an infarct of your kidney, you can have an infarct of anything where the blood vessel gets occluded. So her her sister probably had an occlusion of a major organ. And then, you know, if it ruptures or you rupture a blood vessel or something like that, it's it's just especially in a small place or a hospital that's not equipped to handle it. And and it just it really makes me sad because around the world, you know, there's a lot of money in Nigeria. There's a lot of money in the United States. There's a lot of money in lots of countries. And we still have these these significant morbidities and mortalities from sickle cell disease. And it's all because of lack of support and lack of awareness and lack of education and lack of all these things that we, that the sickle cell population, the warriors of the world deserve this because the people that actually have sickle cell disease, it's not that many people compared to other diseases. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you talk about cancer in the world. That's a big number. You know, heart attacks in the world, that's a big number. Sickle cell in the world is a big number, but not like those. Well, Dr. A. Bear, man, you know, that was, uh, that's, that's crazy, man. It's a great episode. We learned something about, about sickle cell in Nigeria and on the other side of the world, you know. It was, it was enlightening, but it broke my heart, man. It yeah. broke my heart. Because you would expect that the place, the cradle of the world, the place where sickle cell came from, but not because it was an illness, it was because it was a protection, protection. To, for, for malaria. Yeah. yeah. That they would that that you know we would have a much better understanding of this situation. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. But you know what, Miss <laughs> Miss Judith Matthews is over there fighting on the other side of the world on behalf of other sickle cell warriors. I think that's an outstanding thing. That you know those are the people that are doing the same work we're doing over here, Doctor A Bear. Listen up, everybody. That's our episode for the day of Living Your Life. I think me and Mr. A. Bear learned a lot today. We appreciate you all for coming. And, uh, you know, hey, listen, we're going to do this again. I think we're going to do it, man. Hey, thank you all so much. Don't forget to go to livingyourlife.online. Hit the subscribe button, and we can't wait to see you on another episode of Living Your Life.